Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Week 10, hot or not? Alex, Jason, back for the Fantasy Football Sackos. Hope you guys are uh, doing better than Alex is this year at Fantasy Football. Um... I can't tell if that's a hat or a code of shame as you look to get your third win of the season this year. Um, man, Alex, are you, how are you feeling about week 10? You ready? I mean, I guess so. Um, I might be able to get back to 500 in one of my, one of my leagues this week. So okay. things are looking up. Um, no, I, uh, I, I'm ready. Like it's, it's handcuffing season. And, oh, boy. Um, you know, we're, we're coming up Thanksgiving's in two weeks, Christmas, Hanukkah, Boxing Day, wherever you celebrate uh, is coming up in a month and a half. You got to get your significant other locked in and maybe it's time to start handcuffing your studs. Yeah. And don't forget about Kwanzaa either. Come on now. Oh, sorry. My apologies. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. All right. So it's the second podcast of the week, which we kind of alternate around to a bunch of different things. Last week was our league winning trades. If you have not watched last Thursday's episode, um, actually, we put it out on Friday the 6th. Look at that. Uh, If you haven't listened to the Friday pod um on league winning trades there is also an article up on our website the fantasy football um basically we talk about the uh, most appealing um matchups by position for the rest of season and for the playoffs so you know who to target in trades before next friday's trade deadline that's right it's that time of year the espn default Uh, Trade deadline is November 20th, so if you haven't made any trades yet or you're looking to make some, you better get to it because you only got a week and change left. So, all right. With that out of the way, please look at it. Yeah. Stop. Hit pause. Go to our website. Look at it. Do it right damn now. Why are you still watching? Just go look at it. No, it's uh, it's really good stuff. Um, And we're going to keep updating that uh, basically through uh the end of the season here um just just to keep the current matchups going so um if you're questioning something go back take a look at that and we'll highlight some of those players now for this week but that's like your overall next five week into the stretch run and then your final three weeks uh in the playoffs i will say just one quick thing to note that um the uh the nfl did pass a potential um, eight teams in the playoffs for each conference. Um, and that that's pending based on if there's any cancel games, um, the rest of the way. So, um, just something for you fantasy managers to be aware of, or in particular commissioners, um, it's possible that they end up canceling some games down the stretch here. And so we've talked about it previously. Just want to bring it up again. You know, if they cancel games, make sure that you're communicating with your league as far as what's going to happen. Uh, a lot of leagues, the ones I'm in, we all said, Hey, you got to finish 16 games, uh, to, and crown a season winner. Um, and so even if a game is canceled, I mean, they're still going to be playing 16 weeks. Um, so technically the season is going to com- go to f- completion. So with that being said, it might be worth carrying a backup, t- like backup quarterback. Just on the off chance, like I, a, a lot of times when it gets to this time of year and hey, Carson Wentz just came off his bye, I'm not going to carry a backup because I know I'm just going to play Carson Wentz the rest of the way. But in case there's a canceled game, it's worth having a Nick Foles, uh, Jared Goff, uh, Ben Roethlisberger as a backup just on the off chance that if an Eagles game gets canceled, you have somebody to pick up and play that week. That wouldn't be just a waiver wire bum. So I'm just throwing that out there. I wouldn't do that for tight ends because all the tight ends suck except for Travis Kelsey, essentially. <laughs> um, but for for the rest of, you know, particularly for quarterbacks, I think it's worth holding on to a backup just in case something's canceled. 
Yeah. And I mean, we're seeing that, um, you know, McCole Hardman was placed on the reserve COVID list. You have, uh, and that happened today. And basically um, the entire 49ers wide receiver core was on the COVID list last week. Last uh, ben, week. Ben is on the COVID list and you know, there, there's a lot of stuff that could be going on the next couple of weeks here. So, um, you know, be vigilant, pay attention, um, and honestly carry a backup quarterback. It's a, it's a wise strategy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm completely with you on that. Um, all right. Shall we get into hot or not? And you know what? Let's do it. While we're talking about handcuffs and cuffing season in the comments down below, please tell me who your favorite handcuff is moving forward for the end of the season into the stretch run. Uh, I and have a couple don't, of, and don't say it's whips and chains and handcuffs and smack a little booty up with my belt. Scream help play my game. <laughs> You're dating yourself. <laughs> Come on, that's a good song. <laughs> You're dating yourself. Oh man. All right. We have some hot quarterbacks. For uh, for week 10, let's start off with Carson Wentz. Uh, Car- Wentz and the Eagles are going up against the New York Giants in New York this week. New York is actually 11th against quarterbacks. Um, you have sure. Alshon practicing in full. Uh, you have a healthy Jalen Rager and you're coming off of a bye. So you have that extra mm-hmm. week to rub out some bumps and bruises and get ready to go. Uh Uh-oh. So, yeah, maybe feeling dangerous. Do you like Carson Wentz this week? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he didn't have really anybody to throw the ball to a couple weeks ago uh, when they played the Giants. So you think about Goddard's back. You think about the fact that Miles Sanders is probably back. And maybe Alshon Jeffrey's back and Rager's back. And all of a sudden, the Eagles offense looks formidable. And keep in mind, Carson once had 359 yards passing just three weeks ago against this same Giants defense, two passing touchdowns. He also had a rushing touchdown. Um, So, I mean, wouldn't you expect him to be better than the 359 passing yards with Rager back and Goddard back and potentially Alshon back? I, I mean, why not? I mean, I, I get that it's not that great of a matchup, but I mean, they they throw the ball so much. To me, it doesn't necessarily need to be more passing yards. I feel like that's possible, but 359 is a sizable amount. What I want it to be is more efficient. I want it to look better. Uh, I think it helps that you have potentially the return of Alshon. You also have Miles Sanders practicing. Hopefully, Sanders is able to make his first appearance in months. Um, and then you have the fact that while yes, you know, they're not the, the worst matchup that there is out there. Um, they are, however, giving up more than seven yards per pass attempt, which is 23rd at the position. So, I mean, teams haven't had to do a whole lot to try and beat the giants. They haven't really been in a lot of games. And so, you know, their defensive ranking I don't really know if I put a whole lot of stock into. So I think Wentz could very well have a good. Yeah, game. and it's it's kind, it's a little strange, right? Because they're giving up the the uh, they're they're like a middle of the road defense against quarterbacks. They're giving up the eleventh fewest points to quarterbacks, but they're giving up the eleventh most points to wide receivers. So like yeah. it's still a good matchup. Um, and so you like you, it's one of those things where, hey. If we we talked a little bit about this before we started. It's like, are we really adding any value? I don't know. Maybe not. People like listening to us. We're entertaining. We're good looking if you're watching us. But it's one of those things where <laughs> if if you saw Carson Wentz and the 11th matchup sitting next to his name, you might immediately be like, eh, I don't know. But I do think that he will be a top 10 quarterback this week. Um, and I, w- I will be honest with you when, when going through my rankings this week, by the way, check them all out. The fantasy football Um, There are so many good quarterback matchups this week, and there are so many good wide receiver matchups this week, and all the running back matchups are brutal. Like if you don't have one of like a like a bona fide top 10 running back there, I have very little doubt that you are going to be starting a wide receiver in your flex spot this week because 
J- just the way the schedule set up, all the good running backs, or not even all the good running backs, some of the like middle of the road running backs have really tough matchups. And so you're just going to be starting more wide receivers this week. Wonderful. All right. Shall we move on? Our next hot okay. quarterback, our next hot quarterback for week 10 is Nick Foles going up against so the right now. Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Minnesota is 26th in terms of fantasy points allowed to the quarterback Uh-oh. position, which is not great. Um, why do you like Nick Foles this week? Do you feel dirty recommending Nick Foles? Because I can't believe that we are. Hey, you know what? A little bit. Um, I mean, we recommended him last week too, and he was fine. How? So just a random question for you. You're you're a Bears fan. I'm a Bears fan, although most of the time I wish I wasn't. And that's OK. Um, how many starts has Nick Foles had with under 40 passing attempts? Oh, geez. Uh, just a guess. Take a guess. He's had what, like six or seven starts? I would say he's probably had half of them with under. He's had one game with under 40 passing attempts. And That's that insane. one game was 39 pass it. That one game was 39. So, I mean, he's literally had 39 or more passing attempts every game. So the, the volume is there. Their offense looks terrible the vast majority of the time. I will not dispute that. We talked last week about how the Bears have one of the easiest schedules down the stretch, including the playoff schedule with quarterback and, and wide receiver. And here we are. Here's one of those first opportunities for Nick Foles where he he threw 52 times last week. And if you watch that game, wow. it was like the quietest 335 yards that a quarterback's had. So he's going to have 40 passing attempts against a defense that is not great. They're giving up, what, the sixth most amount of points to to the quarterback position. Um, so I mean, it might not look pretty, but. Over the last five games, the Vikings have given up two passing touchdowns in each of those games, and they've averaged giving up 300 yards passing. It's 297, technically. So it might not be pretty, but Nick Foles is going to be a very playable quarterback this week. I was going to say, the Vikings are giving up the third most opponent passing yards per game in the league. So... You know, if you got a, if you have a hobble, it's dirty. If you have a hobbled David Montgomery, maybe you pass more and you lean a bit, a little bit more on it. You know, it's just the they're the gonna yards, throw a lot anyway. The That's yards just are gonna offense. be there. It's just the thing is like they're not long passes, and nope. they're not gonna score a whole lot. And so it's just like. It's hard to watch because the drives generally don't go well and they usually don't end in points. But yeah, they, they're either going to go three and out or they're going to have a touchdown drive. Like you just know, like you can literally watch them and be like, oh, Nick Foles has it this series or oh, no, not this time. You can just go ahead and punt. It's second down, whatever. You know, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> so don't get me wrong. I don't want you to have to play Nick Foles, but I mean, I think he's a top 15 top 12 play this week just because of just because of the matchup oh boy all right let's move on shall we i can't this is i am excited to see you try to defend this uh next up we have lamar jackson as a hot quarterback yes indeed at new england who is giving up the third fewest amount of points to quarterbacks at 14.8 on average per week. Mm-hmm. Please tell me why Lamar is going, going to score a whole heck of a lot when he hasn't looked great so far this year. Uh, the Patriots defense is not very good. That's I, I know what you just said, but they're very slow. They're a slow defense and Lamar Jackson is fast. This is the groundbreaking analysis of why you come listen to the Sackos, baby. Lamar Jackson's fast. Patriots defense is slow. When they played last year, 
Did, do you do you remember last year when they played? It was a Sunday night game. It was in Baltimore. One of the one of the people on this podcast put a hundred dollars on the Patriots to win. <laughs> they were minus three, and they lost thirty seven to twenty. They got absolutely blown out. Um, Lamar Jackson had sixteen carries, sixty one yards, and two touchdowns. Um, he had a hundred. He had a seventy three percent completion percentage and a passing touchdown, one hundred sixty three passing yards. So, hey. This is just a straight up, I think Lamar breaks out of it this week and he starts turning it on down the stretch. That it's, it's more, I guess it's a gut call, but I saw what Lamar did to the Patriots last year. And for whatever reason, every time I think of the Patriots facing like a, uh, a running quarterback, I always think of like what Ronnie Brown did to them out of the wildcat and like. 2011 oh, wow. where he had four rushing where he had like four rushing touchdowns on him like they've just never been able to stop running quarterbacks um and i don't think they're going to stop him this week wow okay um man where to even begin with that so they're giving up the new england patriots are giving up the ninth fewest Opponent passing yards per game at just over 220. He doesn't throw. That's well, that's not, it's not his that game. he doesn't throw. It's that he, he can't, can't throw. He can't do it well. Yeah. But he can um, run. Uh, however, I will say that the New England Patriots, surprisingly, I think, are giving up the most yards per pass attempt in the league. At 8.4. Marquise Brown, finally? Maybe, so finally? It's, it's oh, not yeah. that they... It's just, I, for whatever, teams just aren't going at them that way. I mean, when people do pass against them, they're giving up almost eight and a half yards a clip. So maybe there's something there. You know, I just, I don't think, I don't want to... I, for whatever reason, Lamar just doesn't hey, look the I, same this year. It's just, I don't know what it That's is. Fine. That offense doesn't look you the same. Cannot look at, you can't look at quarterback rankings when you're talking about Lamar Jackson. They gave up 186 yards and four touchdowns to San Francisco a couple weeks ago. Like True. That running defense is not like... Lamar is a glorified running back. Like That just happens to throw the ball a little bit. You know, and I know that he took offense to that pretty good for a running back. I'm the MVP. Well, yeah, you're not great this year. He's a running quarterback. And so you have to look at it from a they're going to run, 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 run the ball. Lamar's had uh, what, 16 care or 15, 13 and 16 carries the last couple of weeks, something like that. They're starting to get to the point where they're just like, you know what? Let's just do what we do. And it's run the damn ball. And so I, I think Lamar is going to be very good this week yeah i mean they are giving up the eighth most rushing yards per game uh at 131 so Mm. yeah i mean i'm give me that for everybody that's really so far down on what jk dobbins has done he's had 14 and 15 touches or 14 and 16 touches the last two weeks yeah he is but like they've played like Two of the top five defenses against the run, like the last two weeks. Of course, it's not Mark Ingram being on. It's it's hey, we've just had a couple of really good matchups, and so I'm excited to see what they can do as an offense as a whole with Mark Ingram gone, hopefully for another week, and uh, not against a top ten defense against the run. So hopefully they are productive, but. Man, Lamar's going on a bender, and it's starting this week. Wow, going on a bender. Who? How old are you? Are you thirty? He is. <laughs> uh, thirty-two, actually. Thanks for asking. People are driving a minivan. People are going on in my, benders. In my New Balance shoes. People are going on benders. With my, you got a dunce cap with on. My mid mid calf mid calf socks. Yeah, man. What color is your Ready minivan? Go. Gold? No, nah, it's gray. <laughs> just like my hair. <laughs> Starting to come in a little bit on the beard. Just right like here. my chest hair. 
Oh, my God. All right, our next hot quarterback. Yeah, don't show it. You don't have any. Our next hot quarterback. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I know it no, is. I, I have like the nipple hair. Oh, God. Yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> You're a lucky wife. <laughs> <laughs> Our next hot quarterback is Jared Goff. Now, I think he's a great streaming option. We're going to do a couple streaming options for you if, in case you're desperate. Uh, Jared Goff and... But Nick Foles isn't desperate enough for people? <laughs> <laughs> Jared Goff and the LA... Ra- well... Uh, they have a much better matchup going. The L.A. Rams are going up against Seattle this week at home. Uh, Seattle historically yeah. bad, uh, basically at in pass defense, um, giving up the most points in the league to quarterbacks at almost 27 points per game, which is just all sorts of historically bad. So. um I'm really excited to see what that offense can look like against Seattle. I mean, they're giving up more than 360 p- opponent passing yards per game on average, which is just mind blowingly terrible. Um, Plenty to go around in that one. Yeah. I, like you could even start your more obscure Rams too, like the Josh Reynolds, Tyler Higbee's of the world make decent plug and plays. So yeah. yeah, start all yeah. of your Rams. Um, are you excited at all, all of them for golf this week? Oh yeah, my uh my wife is excited because her team name last year was the Golf Balls. Um so she's always had a special place in her heart for Jared Goff. Um I uh yeah, I if they're bad this week, um you okay? If if they're bad this week, I don't know what uh what I'll do. Honestly, uh, C- Cooper Cup did not practice, or he was a limited practice uh, player this um, today, as we're recording on Wednesday, uh, with a wrist injury. Theoretically, he's going to play. If he doesn't, then definitely pick up Josh Reynolds. Um, but they said that he's on track to play. So just something to be aware of. Um, he had 20 targets two weeks ago. They're coming off a of bye week, but Cooper Cup had 20, I repeat, 20 targets against Miami a couple weeks ago. Um, and 11 catches so yeah fire up your rams all all full put it in drive get it going all right and uh next drive the minivan down to Tua Tagovailoa and the Miami Dolphins town. minivan town it's a scary place to be don't go there kids um the the Miami Dolphins That's- are playing the Los Angeles Chargers at home this week. The Chargers 29th against quarterbacks this season, giving up 21 and a half points on average. Uh, Tua has a nice built-in floor that we got a nice peak of last week uh, with his seven rushing attempts for 35 yards. It's something that a lot of quarterbacks aren't going to have. I think he's a good streamer. Um, their coaching staff have come out and said, look, we aren't starting Tua because he was a highly drafted rookie. We're starting Tua because we genuinely think that he is going to do a better job than Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, so I'm excited to see what Tua can do against the Chargers this week. Um, Alex, how do you feel about Tua? Do you think he's a viable streamer? Do you remember earlier in the season when you put Ryan Fitzpatrick and his beard up there with with his hair all did up and then you put me calling me Fitz Fitz tragic uh, yeah. with, with my hair and my beard. Well, yeah, here, well, who's still got their job? Who still got their job? I do. I was going to say I still got my job. And we Fitz don't need magic to talk about it. Bench. We don't need to talk about it. We can show the people in the video. Yeah. Well, how do you, I mean, how I do look you much like better now? I, I, uh, I went back and uh, we we were watching an old video of of the Sackos uh, earlier today talking about Alan Lazard and I just look so awful. So thank you so much for sticking with us because my God, I look good right now. Um, yeah, I think I think Tua um, is is more than playable. Um, so yeah, he's he's a fine streamer. Uh, he's definitely definitely available uh, in your league or potentially available. Depends on what happened with waivers. Um, but he should be worth the pickup just because of the rushing yards alone. Um, as things kind of break down, um, 
rookie running backs tend to use their legs. So if he's going to have a floor um, of those rushing yards, then he's playable. All righty. Let's move into some not quarterbacks this week. Um, first up, we have Ryan Tannehill going up against the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are first against quarterbacks, giving up the fewest on a weekly basis at just under 14 points per week. Uh, I'm not excited to see what Tannehill is going to do. I think it's going to be a very not pretty game. Uh, the Indianapolis yeah. offense doesn't really look good at all right now either. So it's just going to be, they're just going to fall into each other. I feel like for a while, but yeah. So, so here's the thing. They, they, Tennessee played the Bears last week. The Bears are the second best against quarterbacks or giving up passing yards, and the Colts are number one. So we knew Ryan, uh, the thrill ride was gonna was gonna end these couple weeks here. Um, they only threw twenty one times. Um, I don't like Derrick Henry this week against the Colts, which are giving up like the second most points to to running backs either. Um, second fewest points. So sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah I screw that up all the time. They're the second best against the running back. So when it comes to Tannehill, he only had six or he only had 14.6 points against the Bears. I don't know if you can expect him to do any better than that. And that was with two passing touchdowns. Like, I don't I don't think he does better than that against the Colts this week. So he's just a complete stay away. Uh, Yeah. I agree. The Colts are giving up the sixth fewest opponent yards per pass attempt at 6.4. So they're uh, they're going to have a good defense out there. And Ryan Tannehill, I don't know. I think he's going to struggle. Hopefully he puts up 15 points. And if you're starting A.J. Brown, hopefully he breaks a long one for you. I wouldn't want to start Corey Davis or Ferkser or um, yeah, Johnny. I wouldn't want to start Johnny yeah, either. Yeah, so, I mean, trust me when I say this. If you have Ryan Tannehill, it's Thursday. You're listening to this right now. Just go pick up anybody else and start them. Seriously, do not start Ryan Tannehill. Literally uh, anybody else that's playing this week. <laughs> and next up in our nod quarterbacks, we have Joe Burrow going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh giving up the fifth fewest points per week to the quarterback position at about 15 and a half. Are you, uh, are you down on Burrow this week? Not really. Um, I, I think you are more than me. I, they're going to throw the ball enough. I, I can see them being behind um, where, yeah, they have a terrible offensive line. They're going to get it out quick. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tyler Boyd have a top 10 week again um, with all those short intermediate throws going to the slot. Um, the way to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers is not on the ground, so it's through the air. Um, and even with a terrible line with the Steelers blitzing all the time, um, I think Burrow will be serviceable. Uh, I think you'll be able to find somebody better than him this week uh, with the matchup. But um, yeah, he's he's playable, but there's other options that are available. Yeah, Pittsburgh giving up the fifth fewest passing yards per game in the league at 214 and a half. And the seventh fewest opponent pass yards or opponent yards per pass attempt tied with Indy at 6.4. So it's going to be a challenge. Joe Burrow is going to have to find a way to get it done against Pittsburgh one of these years. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's welcome to the big boy league, right? You no more scrubs, uh, at least not this week. So um, I would try to stay away from Burrow if I could. I would probably pick up any of the other streaming quarterbacks that we mentioned before and play him over Burrow. Um, next no scrubs also a good song next up on our not quarterbacks we have Matt Stafford playing against the Washington Redskins Washington football team formerly Redskins uh, at home Washington Beep. football team is giving up the ninth fewest fantasy points to the quarterback position at about 17 and a quarter you don't have Galladay well he didn't practice today, so it's Probably. not it's not looking great. Um, are you trying to stay away from Stafford this week? I am. Yeah, um, I'm surprised that he's even rostered in as many leagues as he is, which is currently 60 percent of leagues. He's quarterback 20 on the year. Um, again, Washington's a tough matchup. Uh, you should not be starting him. 
Yeah, Washington giving up the fewest opponent passing yards per game at 185. So, and plus he's coming off a concussion. Like you just don't want to mess around with that. And and no, Galladay. he even admitted last week that with with COVID uh, and him having to isolate it, like impacted him mentally before the game, and then he got concussed. Um, not not great. No. All right, moving on to running backs. First up, hot running backs. We have James uh, Robinson going up against the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay. Green Bay is not great against running backs. Uh, let me tell you, they are 31st in, in terms of points allowed. Uh-oh. They have given up, on average, 33.74 points per game to the running back position. You saw, I think everybody saw what Dalvin Cook did to him. That was just taking him to the woodshed. Um, do you think it's going to be more of the same with James Robinson? Yeah, I, I don't see why not. Uh, the Packers have played eight games. Uh, they've given up a touchdown to the running back in six of them. So I'd expect James Robinson to get in the end zone at least once. Uh, he's coming off of a of a relatively good week where he, you know, there's questions about what would that offense look at without Gardner Minshew. And they were like, we're going to give the ball to James Robinson, 25 carries, 99 yards and a touchdown. Um, if nothing else, like he is a product of just getting carries. Like he's going to have 20 touches at almost every game. You have to play him at this point. Everybody knows that, but Honestly, there are just not a lot of options for good running back matchups this week. So like the, the people we're pointing out are blatantly obvious um, because th- there's just not that many guys. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried that this might be a little bit of a trap, though. Like a smidge of me is worried because I feel like it's a trap. It's a trap. Um, While they're not great against running backs and running backs score a lot of points against them. They have given up the 12th fewest rushing yards per game at one at 111. So they aren't slouches in terms of the yards that they're giving up per game. I feel like they're probably going to load up the box and try to make Jake Luton beat them. And you have you're going to have Jair Alexander, who is injured, not exactly healthy covering DJ Chark. So it's going to be who else can beat him and can Jake Luton make the throw. So that'll be interesting to see, I guess, if the Jags can keep it close. Because I just. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you on, on all on all the yardage stuff. I mean, they've given up 100 every game to running backs, except Detroit, who doesn't run the ball. Atlanta, of which Gurley runs three yards and falls down. Houston, <laughs> which they just destroyed them. Uh, San Francisco, they destroyed them. So, but that's what I yeah, see, though. Don't you right. see? It, it's possible. Don't you see Aaron Rodgers coming out and throwing four it's touchdowns possible. in the first two quarters, and then they just stop running the ball? Like I, that's what I see. So th- that's fair. And I've also watched the Packers enough times where there's one of those like weird, weird ass games this time of year where they play a really crappy team. And it's like <laughs> 12 to 10 at halftime or 13, 10 at halftime. <sighs> and the Jaguars are just like hanging around. And then everybody's just like looking around, waiting for Aaron Rodgers to just win the game. Like that happens at least once a year. And I'm not going to say it's this week, but I would not be surprised to see them play ball control. Just like what the Minnesota Vikings did against them a couple weeks ago. And it was super windy and just say, all right, See if you can stop the run and all the defense needs is one stop and just look out. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't think it'll be a blowout because there's just one of those games every year. And I, I think this could be it. Ball control to major Aaron. <clears throat> all right, moving on. We have next up. I'm not sure I get that one. Ground control to major Tom. It's fine. Um, Next up, we have Aaron Jones. Really? And you think I'm dating myself? Okay, yeah. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's fine. Um, 
Next up, we have Aaron Jones on the other side of the ball going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are 27th against running backs. Uh, Alex, why don't you tell us why you're excited for Aaron Jones? Well, I'm really excited for Aaron Jones because after last week when they wouldn't give him the ball on the one yard line, that I think they're going to give him the ball on the one yard line. Um, he's averaging 20 a week when he plays. Um, although, here's the thing with Aaron, like he's due for just one of those explosion games. And I know I just said that I think this game could be close, but if it's not, Aaron Jones, we, we talked about it last or during the preseason where there was like, what 50% of his points came in 25% of his games or whatever. Right. Um, so if, if we look at what he's done this year in half PPR, 15.6, 43.6, 15.6, 19.6, 11.6 and 10.4. Like we're just kind of due for the explosion game and, and with a, with a weak matchup. Um, if there's ever going to be a game where he explodes, this is probably the one. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm right with you. I just think that they're going to just run. I think they're going to run Jacksonville out of the house. So I'm, uh, I'm with you on the hotness there. Next up, we have Nick Chubb going up against the Houston Texans. Welcome back. Welcome back. Great song by Mace. Uh, Nick Chubb going up against the Houston Texans, who are 30th against running backs. I, it's, you got song references. I do too. Mine are just better than yours. You didn't know a David Bowie song. I just, wow. I don't even know who you are anymore. Um, frankly, man. All right. Tell us why you're excited for Nick Chubb. Why, why is he giving you a chubby? My, I mean, my references are way better than yours. I hope everybody recognizes. That you're that. wearing a stupid hat and you're insulting people. Come on. It's embarrassing. What's wrong with insulting people while wearing is a beautiful hat? It's a Lord. great hat. You're just jealous that you couldn't pull this off. Honestly, um, why? So, Hold on. Did your grandmother knit that for you? And how big does she think your head is for it to fit over those headphones? <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> no it was my aunt and uncle that caught it uh first of all second of all the more that i look were at you, myself in the were video you a conjoined I kinda, twin at one point did you swallow your other twin <laughs> no oh my god um, i i kind of feel like the more i look at myself i kind of look like dark helmet uh, from Spaceballs <laughs> with the <laughs> I bet if you turn it inside out it would just look perfect oh my I god really? I love the uh, the little dangly tassels too oh no see like it yeah it doesn't oh really... okay well that's that's yeah <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to make highlight clips of this show and people are going to be like, what the hell is on this guy's head? Because there's going to be no intro to any of it. Oh, my God. He's wearing a stupid hat. God, if you're listening, doing? you need to go to YouTube and see how dumb Side Alex note, looks. I, I love having these like hanging down things. They're, they, they're like fun to play with or whatever. Okay. Um, so so uh wh where were we i have oh nick chubb uh great matchup houston's run defense stinks they give up the third most points to running backs next welcome back nick chubb welcome back houston giving up the second most yards per rush attempt in the league at 5.1 only behind cincinnati so yeah it's gonna be a long day for that houston defense uh mm -hmm. and finally antonio gibson at detroit Detroit giving up the most points to running backs at more than 35 a week, Ugh. which is incredible. Uh, fire up Antonio Gibson. Fire up J.D. McKissick. He's going to have 15 catches. Alex Smith <laughs> is a check down machine. I think uh, J.D. McKissick is probably the the uh, what the the wide receiver one on that team this week. Um, no, also McCord. something worth, something worth noting, JD McKissick had an 83% snap share 
83% of snaps. 83. Uh, Gibson only played 25 to McKissick's 45. So, hmm. um, yeah, there were times that they were both on the field at the same time. They're getting creative over there, man. I like it. So, are you excited? Yeah, they don't for- have a whole lot of other weapons to throw to. No. Or give the ball to, for that matter. Just uh, yeah, scary sure, Terry. Abs- yeah, that's, that's all they got. It's a good matchup. Uh, Alex Smith is going to game manage. They're going to run the ball a ton. They're going to check down a ton. And it, it is good to see Alex Smith back. I hope he can stay healthy. All righty. Not running backs. First up, we have Josh Jacobs this week. Why are you not excited for Josh Jacobs going up against Denver? Uh, Denver is giving up the six fewest points to running backs. Uh, Josh Jacobs is running back nine. There, there was a week earlier this season where we were like, you know, you can find better running backs than than Josh Jacobs, and the answer was, yeah, you could find a whole lot of running backs better than Josh Jacobs, and that was against Tampa Bay, where he only had four point six points. Um, I feel like we got another one of those weeks coming where. Like the way to beat Denver is through the air. It's not on the ground. So you, you're talking about um, like, wh- how are you going to win a game? Denver's giving up the 25th or sorry, they're giving up the seventh most uh, points to wide receivers. They're giving it up through the air. Um, they're not giving it up on the ground. So unless Josh Jacobs is going to have more of a passing um, passing game role, which he started out the season, like it looked like he was going to. And that kind of evaporated, which is a little disappointing. I know he's he's RB nine, but like he started out with four catches, and that's the most he's had all year. That was also the most yards he had all year was week one through the air, and and since then he hasn't, you know, had more than twenty five yards receiving, which is super disappointing um, because we thought that he could be like the guy this year if he had those receiving touches. Hey, RB nine still obviously very good for where you were taking him um you're you're getting the value but this is just another one of those rough weeks tough matchup and it seems like when he doesn't have a good matchup he doesn't perform yeah i feel like he's more of a high floor guy than a high ceiling guy at this point um it's just you just want to see that offense do a little bit better um i i don't know but yeah i'm i'm with you on the the down versus denver this week and then next up, we have Joe Mixon at Pittsburgh. Um, obviously, Pittsburgh Yuck. is giving up the fewest points per week to the running back position at less than 18 to all running backs. Um, it's not great. Um, I mean, is, is there a whole lot? To no, say? it's I mean, not good. The only chance that they have is if Ben doesn't play and like they turn the ball over constantly because Mason Rudolph, like when Ben was out last year, what the Steelers averaged like less than a, or one touchdown a game. So if Ben yeah. doesn't play because of COVID and they turn the ball over a lot, then maybe Mixon can get in. But I'm just, I'm not about it. Yeah, I mean, he's still running back 19 on the year, which is kind of crazy considering um, he had a buy buy last week and didn't play the two weeks before that. Um, I mean, even in a tough matchup against Indy, though, um, the last time he did play, 18 carries, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Um, so when he does play, like, the quantity is there because he's had 16-plus carries every game he's played in. Um, it's, just a, it's just a tough matchup, so... Um, you know, somebody that obviously you're down on because of playing the Steelers. But, you know, I if you have him, you're probably you're probably playing him because you're happy. He's finally back after not having him play for a month. Um, just temper your expectations. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him score a touchdown. Um, but uh, yeah, tough, tough sledding with the year he's had and knowing that he has to play six games against the Cleveland Browns, the Baltimore Ravens. And Pittsburgh Steelers, where would you draft Joe Mixon next year? Where would you rank him? Running back 10 or higher? Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I think really? he was running back 11 last. Oh, you're, I, I'm saying low. I'm lower than that. Um, I, 
Okay. Outside higher of it? lower, higher lower can be however you want to interpret that. Would you um, rank I, him in the I, top I think 15? Probably. Um, top 20. It, it would be nice if, it'd be nice if Gio Bernard wasn't there. Um, and I just paid they would him. actually use Mixon in the passing game. Right. They paid Mixon. Um, he still got three years on his deal after this year. They're paying him like an RB one. Um, I would like to, I, I think that that offensive line will be much better next year. Um, because they're obviously going to have to protect Burrow. Um, and he will benefit just as much as Joe Burrow will from having a better offensive line down the line. So I, I still think he's going to be a top 15 back. Um, and somebody where you can probably get him at a little bit of a discount just because everybody has Joe Mixon fatigue. Yeah. And I mean, they just paid Gio too, though. I mean, he just signed a two year, $9.7 million contract. So, Ugh. and it goes through next well, year. So he's not going away. No, he's not going away. Yeah. So I would draft Mixon like probably the 15 plus maybe between 15 and 20. He's just going to have a, yeah, he's, he's going to third round. Yeah. Well, he's, yeah. I think that's where he belongs though. He's going to have a crappy playoff schedule every year because of the rest of the teams in his conference, but maybe, although this year it's pretty good. Dallas Pittsburgh, which is rough, but then at Houston, um, two yeah. of those three are pretty good. Luckily. Yeah. Luckily they only have the one Pittsburgh matchup in there. All right. Well, let's move on. Shall we? Next up, we have Derek Henry going up against the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are giving up the second fewest points to running backs at 18 and a half a game. Alex, why are you not excited about Derrick Henry given that? Uh, I mean, let's just say for the sake of argument that he repeats exactly what he just did against the Bears defense, which is actually way worse than it than the Colts are against the run. Um, he had 21 carries for 68 yards. Are you really like that's what it's going to be? I'm not saying you bench him. That's what that line is going to be. But I don't know if he's unless he has a touchdown. It's not going to be much better than that. Um, no short week. He just he just got the crap kicked out of him by the Bears defense three days ago. I uh, I don't see that being any. So I don't see it being substantially better. It would take some big old balls to sit running back three but I mean I am a firm believer in play the matchups and I mean I think you could justify it look the Indianapolis Colts are tied with the Tampa Bay Bucks for giving up the fewest yards per rush attempt at 3.3 the Indianapolis Colts are only allowing on average 83 and a half rushing yards Per game. Um, Derrick Henry does not catch balls. He does not catch passes. And he is going to be, go through no. a very, very rough set of games before the fantasy playoffs come. Um, we talked about it in last week's podcast when we talk about guys that can win you your league. Derrick Henry will win you your league if you make the playoffs. Derrick Henry will not help you get to the playoffs though. Like he's going to be like next to junk. I mean, he will, he's still really good. Yeah, but he's going to, they're, they're just tough matchups. I mean, you're going to have to play. You have to, I agree with you, but like I would almost bet that he averages less than 10 points a week. Actually, I would, I would put that on the board. Yeah, I'll take the over on that. Really? I'll do a board bet. Okay. Yeah, I'll, th- I'll take the over. Yeah, okay. Until the playoffs? Uh, let's see here. What is the schedule? That's, yeah, I'll... Oh, boy. I would do at so least while, through... While you're looking that up. Yeah, so, Indy, Baltimore, Indy, Cleveland. So, last, yes, less than 10 a week. Oh, God. Indy, Baltimore, okay. Indy, I'll, Cleveland. I'll take that. Um... Yeah, I mean, he'll score four touchdowns in those four games, and then all he needs is to average 40 yards rushing a week. He'll, he'll get that. Um, so here's the thing. Against Indy last year, because, I mean, let's just compare it, right? 
Uh, uh, week two, he had 15 carries, 82 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, week tw- uh, week 13, he had 26 carries, 149 yards, and a touchdown. Wow. So, I mean, it's a tough matchup. That defense did get hurt but, in the I middle mean, and the end of last year. that he year. can do it. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. And, I mean, Darius Leonard's back. Um, they shut down the, the Detroit running game. Um, like, they, they shut down everybody that they play. So, um, just be aware. Tough matchup. I understand that you can't bench him, probably. But if you have better matchups, I think... I think you could you could try to try to look really smart, which is always fun. All right. Unless you're wrong and then it sucks. And you <laughs> have RB RB three sitting on your bench. All right. We are uh we're getting low on time. So let's go through some pass catchers, shall we? Our hot pass catcher pew, pew, pew. first up is Tyler Boyd going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You have we talked about how we're down on Burrow. Why are you up on Tyler Boyd? They are 21st against receivers. Yeah, it's all about those slot. Yeah, it's all about that slot. And I think they're going to have to get the ball quick. And he's the he's the underneath target. Um, it seems like T. Higgins and A.J. Green kind of run some deeper routes. I, I know Higgins kind of can operate shorter, too. Um, but but Tyler Boyd it just lives in that short intermediate route area. Um, so I would not be surprised to see him have double digit targets and the way to beat the Steelers through the air. So, um, he's their number one guy. You got to play Tyler Lockett if you got, or sorry, Tyler Lockett, Tyler Boyd, if you got him. Um, so yeah, just, I love, love Boyd. Yeah. You know, week eight against Tennessee, right when you thought that maybe there was some life to AJ green, he turns around and drops, uh, five targets and he turns them into two catches for 19 yards drops 2.9 points and so it's like right when you thought there might be something there for aj green there's a whole lot of nothing against tennessee so ah it's really i think it's just those two receivers boyd and higgins that you can rely on um yeah i agree with you though if they get the if they have to get the ball out fast it's going to be a tyler boyd game so yeah I, i get it all right uh, next up, we have Brandon Cooks going up against the Cleveland Browns, who are 28th against receivers. Do you think uh, Brandon Cooks keeps the hot streak alive post Bill O'Brien? Yeah, I mean, since that donut in week four, where he literally didn't score nothing, his targets have been 12, 9, 9, and 9. I mean, he is a guy, in my opinion, that you shouldn't trade for because of the playoff matchup, which is at Chicago, at Indy, home against Cincinnati. Those two, the the week 14, 15 are awful. Um, but if you can get one more week out of Brandon Cooks here uh, against Cleveland, and I think he goes off, um, I would try to trade him um, for people that are not paying attention to the playoff schedule. So I just want to highlight him. One last time here on the pod of, um, hey, get the last week out. And with the trade deadline looming, try to flip him because um, that playoff schedule is deadly. Yeah. And they have a good matchup. I mean, Cleveland's giving up the ninth most passing yards per per game this season. I think Deshaun's going to be able to pass it uh, on Cleveland. So and yeah, we absolutely did talk about how just disgusting that playoff schedule is. So get your last week trade him move on go get you some some guys that you think can help you you know in the comments below let us know who you think your favorite trade target is who's going to take you to the the uh, fantasy football championship this year all right next up we have travis fulgham of the philadelphia eagles going up against the new york giants in new york who is 23rd against receivers this season. Alex, tell me why you are so excited for Fulgham, even though there is a Jalen Rager and Alshon reappearance. Yeah, that doesn't scare me all that much. I think that just helps the offense move. Fulgham has proven to be one of Wentz's favorite targets. I know part of that was uh, because there was literally nobody else to throw the ball to. Yeah. Um, 
But I mean, excluding excluding the first week that he played, he's had over 73 yards and five catches in every game. His worst game was against the Giants a couple weeks ago. Uh, he had 11 targets in that game. Um, Jason likes to refer to elite target share. Uh, he's had it again. I, I know that that people are coming back, but targets since he took over playing full time 13 10 11 7 um I, he's going to get the ball thrown to him uh, he's got a touchdown in every game except the one against the giants and i believe he had an end zone target and just couldn't pull it in um he's he's great he should continue to be played you should not be afraid that others are coming back um because i think he's clearly their number one going forward okay all right. Um, he did only have one more target than Rager in Rager's first game back from injury. I'm really interested to see what the target splits look like this week with three healthy receivers. Um, the coaching staff also mentioned potentially yep. putting Rager back to return punts, which is honestly a little bit terrifying given all the injuries that we've seen this year. Um, but yeah, so yeah. That, that'll that be interesting to see. Um, I like it. All right, a uh, couple more guys to highlight here. We talked about Jared Goff being a good streaming candidate. You got to fire up all of your Rams. We, t- we mentioned that already. Cup and Woods are going to have huge days. You could start Josh Reynolds against Seattle, giving up the most points to yep. wide receivers this year. And then uh, on tight end, um, one guy that I want to highlight is Austin Hooper going up against the Houston Texans. The Texans are giving up the 10th most fantasy points yeah. to tight ends at 14 and a half points a week. Um, Hooper in his last three games has had 23 targets. You no longer have OBJ. He doesn't have an appendix anymore. So he's going to be running faster than he ever has before in his life. And uh, yeah, he's healthy. So <laughs> pick up Austin Hooper. If he's available. That's how that works. League. Is that not how it works? So, um, no, speaking from experience, I don't think I've run since I got my appendix out four years ago. Um, <laughs> did you run also, before? Uh, <laughs> just, just looking at tight end. No, that's beside the point. <laughs> um, <laughs> just looking at tight end rankings, like Alex, Krug, honestly, athlete. if you go, if you go and look, <laughs> yeah, do you, do you remember the, uh, like NCAA, uh, football games where you would be recruiting people out of ho- out of high school and they would just be called ATHs like they wouldn't yeah. have a position assigned to them that is me that's you yeah that, that I is remember your athlete you can put I me, just remember you can plug and play me plug and play me wherever you want I just remember in high school cuz like the wrestling room was on the balcony that overlooks the gym floor and watching all of these oh no kids play basketball and you are obviously one of them playing basketball and i just remember seeing everybody on the basketball floor be like 6 feet tall or lower and then there was like the one tall really pale white guy oh that's not that true that was like 6 6 or something obnoxious but yes you were like the you yeah, were the six- yeah, the tallest guy on the team that yeah, couldn't you, dunk. You know what you reminded yeah. me of? when Because you talk about, you brought up uh, the the NCAA recruiting. How you could just create somebody. Gre- Greg Ostertag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I was thinking how you could create a player and you would just make him really, really tall and he would just be absolutely broken in like half of those games. But yes. Lord. All right. <clears throat> Back to the subject. We're... Here we are. Uh, just yeah. J- just as a side note, uh, tight end matchups are absolutely horrific this week. If you don't have Travis Kelsey, um, it sucks. Austin Hooper is my number two tight end. Every every tight end, like if you want to talk, Jason wants to get rid of kickers. I just want to get rid of the tight end position. Screw tight ends this year; they're terrible. <laughs> not Kelsey. All right, let's move on to some not pass catchers, shall we? First up, we have Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen going up against the Chicago Bears. The Bears are giving up the third fewest points to receivers at 27 and a half a week. Um, Man, I'm just, we say it every week. It's like people think that we're just Bears fans. Like 
the Bears are just so good on defense. It's really a shame because I feel like they're wasting a really good defense like that team is or Nagy or just the offense. Like the offense is so bad. The offense is just as bad, I feel like, as the defense is good. But <sighs> yeah, stay away from Jefferson. Stay away from Thielen. Did you know that? Did you know that Travis Kelsey currently has 53 more points than the second ranked tight end? No, I didn't. He is 130, he is 139 and a half PPR, and Darren Waller has 86.4. You said he has 139? That's unbelievable. 139. Okay. 139 fantasy points. He's averaging five more points. Guess what that makes him? He would be wide receiver four behind. Oh, God. Behind Tyreek Hill, DK Metcalf, and Devontae Adams. He has more fantasy points than Stephon Diggs, Tyler Lockett, Calvin Ridley, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen, Allen Robinson, Will Fuller, etc. He has more fantasy points than all of them. Dear God. Wide receiver yeah. four in your tight end spot. I mean, I. Yeah, don't don't hold me on record on this, but I'm just this sounds crazy. Um, I think you can justify him going one one next year if he's going to be that much better than every other tight end. Like he just isn't screw though. it just with take Kittle. He wasn't and... with Kittle. There were two guys, and then you had yeah, this well, weird he... thing where like you had this weird thing where like Ertz Zach disappeared. Ertz died. Mark Andrews has been nothing because that offense has been nothing. It's literally just Kelsey and nobody else. So yeah, you talk about how you have to draft a tight end early. Otherwise you like wait and you don't want to pick a middle guy. It's to me, it's like you draft Kelsey or Kittle early or you just wait forever. But man, God, like Kittle was only averaging a couple points less a game than Kelsey was and he played hurt half the time so just rough yeah I know he gets hurt every year though like yeah he does or at least it seems like it all right moving on our next Uh, yeah other other wider uh, yeah other wide receivers to potentially not start I I don't even want to bring this up but you could be looking at another Arizona type matchup with DK Metcalf if he has Jalen Ramsey on him and they just throw to Tyler Lockett all game um, because whoever's got Jalen Ramsey on him, I can almost guarantee you that Russ is going to throw to the other side of the field. Um, we won't know exactly who Jalen Ramsey's lining up against, but you saw what they did with Patrick Peterson where they literally just threw away from him all game. Don't be surprised to see the same thing happen. So if Jalen Ramsey's on Metcalf, Lockett's great. And if Jalen Ramsey's on Lockett, then Metcalf will be great. Yeah, the only other thing I'd say is for everybody that's super excited about DJ Chark, uh, prepare for some Jair Alexander. The Jair Alexander experience who made Calvin Ridley disappear. So, I don't know. He's not exactly healthy, so I'm not saying Chark will disappear. I'm just not betting on Jake Luton to beat Jair Alexander throwing the ball. So, there's that. Um yeah, uh, Green Bay fifth against wideouts, giving up about 33 points per game to the position. And then Mark Andrews is my last, our last stay away. Uh, the New England Patriots, and they are playing in New England, are first against tight ends, giving up only seven points per week to the position. So that does it for hot or not. Do you have any final thoughts on any of these guys? No, not really. I uh, just wanted to reiterate handcuffing season. Um, maybe take a look at, at finding some guys to to back up everybody. Um, the only risk in doing that, especially with COVID going around, if people are out, um, potentially the entire running back room or, you know, if a game's going to get canceled, then your, your handcuff doesn't do you any good. Um, so no, best of luck. Um, if you have any trade offers that you want to send our way, like you can hit us up on social media. Um, you can tweet directly at us. You can Instagram us, uh, hit us up on Facebook, anything you want. We're, uh, we're here for you. Um, this is kind of the time of year where, um, you know, a lot of decisions are made that can, can win or lose you money. So if you want to 
you know, bounce anything off of us, we're here for you. Um, otherwise, you know, it, it never hurts to keep sending out probing trade offers because you never know what somebody's going to accept. Um, I mean, Jason just traded in, in our league of record, um, uh, James Connor for, for Zeke and Robert Woods, essentially, if I'm being honest, it, it was Connor and shark for Zeke and, and Robert Woods. Um, so, I mean, you, you just never know what somebody's going to accept. So, you know, you can be the annoying guy in your league that, you know, eventually somebody's going to say yes and you get away with highway robbery. So don't, don't be afraid of doing it. All right. And that's going to bring us to newsy stuff. Newsy stuff. Golly. I love it. The New York I'm Times. Always, I, I never know because you don't prepare me if we're doing this beforehand or not. And then you break it out all of a sudden at the end of the episode. I just I get excited every time. The New York Times has announced that the New Yorker has fired Jeffrey Tubin. Longtime staff writer at the magazine after an investigation into his behavior because of a work video conference on Zoom during which he exposed himself. Alex, have you uh, you're a full time worker from home. What's the uh, what's the most out of normal thing that you've seen on a Zoom call? What's the craziest Zoom experience you've had? Um, I mean, am I allowed to say that I pooped on a conference call or took a shower while on a conference call? <laughs> Just listening in. What? I mean, my, my video wasn't on. <laughs> yeah. Can they hear I the mean, water we were... running? No, no, no. I, I would mute myself and turn the video off. Um, but if I knew that I wasn't going to be talking um i'm sending this to the higher period. ups at um, your work i mean <laughs> i mean that would be unfortunate probably um if they're listening hey give me a raise um but uh no i i, I haven't seen anything i haven't seen anything super weird um there i mean people have animals running in the background or children yelling or crying um you know Classic stuff, but not, nothing too outrageous where I've seen somebody expose themselves on camera. And our last bit of newsy stuff is Britney Spears lost her court appeal to remove her father from conservatorship. She is now literally a slave for her dad. So there you go. Free Britney, everybody. And with that, let's move to. Yeah, that whole thing is super messed up. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. Just crazy. I can't believe she lost that, but woof. All right, let's go to the social media page. If you found any part of today's show entertaining, enlightening, um, I don't know, funny or whatever, what have you, please terrible ahead. or awful. If you didn't like it, please like subscribe. Let us know what you didn't like. Um, <laughs> ring the bell so you can get more of this mediocre fantasy football analysis coming your way at the speed <laughs> of smell and uh, yeah visit our website we got those end of season uh, rest of season and playoff projections live uh, we do weekly rankings for all the positions and flex for free no paywalls for any of the content on our site um, yeah and thank you for listening have a good night I'm a slave for you. Like that. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.